Hello everyone, this is uh, Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today we're on September 10, 2024. And today around the table, we have Kenneth Salerno, Mark Waite, Damien Duportal, and myself, Bruno Verhachten. Welcome. On the agenda today, I have uh, container image updates for the controller and the agents, a work in progress on images, the spring project migration, Java 21 support, 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan, um, maybe a few words about an interesting silver bug in Ubuntu 2404, and then a few words about Adoption Summit. Damien, now that you're there, is there anything you would like to address uh, that is not yet in the agenda? Uh, minor things. Let's uh, go to the agenda. If we have time, I will add them at the end because okay. it's only minor implementation details. Wait a sec, but you're also going to tell us something about containers, aren't you? Because I think container builds are delayed, so container image updates may have something as well. True, true. there is that major topic I forgot about. Thanks for the reminder. So yes, uh, I will have a major information for the container update for today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining then. So let's start with the container image update. So for the Jenkins controller, we had the new LTS last week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so the main information is that we migrated to Jenkins 2.462.2. There is a change log in the agenda. We also have the video from Darren and I hope Mark, I haven't had the time to watch it. Where are you in that video, Mark, as always? Was. Yeah, okay, cool. So I will watch it later today. Uh, we can see also a few bumps from UB8 and uh, UB9, Debian Bookworm, as always. And there is something that made its way in the previous weeklies a described DNS argument and a related error message in 1917. If you want to have more detail on that, click on the link or watch the previous video from two weeks ago. For the two weeklies, so we have the 2.475 and 76. 76, you created that earlier today, Damien. It looks like it was handmade and not made by a machine this time. Oh, but I say that, but most of the time it's you, Mark, who do that. Uh, by hand, right? No, oh, no, it's not been done yet. So that's a good point. Oh. Uh, so if if you click the releases tab, so what you're yeah. showing is the tag. If you click the releases it's not the tab, release. it's not the we idea. don't have it. So that's it. Mark Waite has not executed the 2.476 checklist yet. So oops. But Thank you. There's nice a good reason for that. There is... No, there really I mean... isn't a good reason for that. The, oh, this come on. this so part of the I checklist get, does not have I got one box. I got oh, one. you do? Okay. Usually, creating the tag triggers the build, and we should publish the GitHub release once the build is finished. As a mark of, we successfully deployed the new images on the Docker Hub, and the GitHub release is a way to mark this at the end. Wait a sec. So were you showing the tag for the containers or for yes. Jenkins core? No, it was for the container, as far as I understand. Oh, okay. For the container, uh, sorry. All right. Good. Good clarification. Oh. I thought we were looking at Jenkins Core. I was wrong. I thought we were looking at Jenkins Core. So you're right. This one is. It's reasonable that we've delayed it because of the infra problem, or because yes. of the Azure outage. Calling it an infra problem is totally unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Azure has a problem. Yeah, Azure so is on fire we... today. <laughs> Um, Damien, while we're there, would you like to tell us more about this incident or the other subject that is linked to this one? The, that's quick. Azure is on fire uh, for regions uh, for spinning up virtual machines. Uh, it's not on fire for Kubernetes cluster. Uh, unless we build Docker images inside virtual machines, as such, we have to wait for one of these machines to finally being spinned up. Looks like they have a particular issue on the region we are using. So they are out of capacity since uh, six or seven hours on US East 2. Uh, so yeah, that was a nightmare yesterday. It, today it's worse, it's Armageddon. Uh, we have one machine every 200 tentatives that works. Oops. And it's, uh, it's the same on all the controllers, including Trusted where we deploy. So expect a delay on our ability to deliver the Docker image. I see. Uh, 
only to make a joke, but um, aren't we supposed to have some kind of agnostic cloud so that everything would have moved to Amazon or digital or something? But no, just kidding. So I know that's not the way With my marketing hat, I would say yes. With my uh, real life uh, SRE, I would say no. Of course. Thank you, Damien. Oops. Ouch. Come on. Okay. Um, now, for the Jenkins agent, we had one new release for the SSH agent with the usual version bumps from Debian and Alpine. And we had two new releases for the Docker agent with just bumps, as far as I know, uh, regarding uh, Debian Bookworm, Alpine Linux, and Arc Linux. Unless I have missed something. Now, for the work in progress in images, uh, we have nothing on the controller. I've spotted two um, progress uh, pull requests on uh, Docker agent. One being the align with Docker SSH agent build processes. It's been there for a few weeks or months, if I'm not mistaken. And we had a proposal earlier this month regarding um, adding agent images for UB9. Uh, the problem, if problem there is, is that the um, um, contributor would like to change the JDK to the one supplied by, oh, let me make that bigger, uh, do, 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 by Red Hat and not Tamarin. But we, the Jenkins project, support and use Tamarin. So I don't know what will uh, what this PR will become. So, so and Damien was very gentle yeah. in making his request. <laughs> I'm I the more I've thought about this the more hard-headed I'm feeling that I don't want us to accept a a new platform that does not use the same JDK that we use everywhere else. I appreciate that Red Hat loves their JDK and I'm glad they support it. I'm glad they maintain it. It's all the right things. But, but. our maintenance and our care of container images mm -hmm. depends on consistency across all the images. Damien uh, am I being too strong in my in my opinion? Am I being too too hard headed? I share the same opinion. It makes okay. sense for the agents to have a new platform because that's something uh, that makes sense for people to build on with their own packages. But it doesn't make sense to introduce a new GDK distribution. I I try to wrote taking model on Mark on being gentle and explaining the problem. They didn't answer. Uh, I think it's time for for me to send them a gentle ping if everyone agree on, hey, do you have any concern uh, uh, regarding my well, proposal? I'd even make it more, more blunt than that. We've discussed in the platform SIG amongst at least several of the maintainers of this image, and we're unwilling to to add one more JDK distro into the mix. Yeah. Right? We, we really want to, we are intentionally choosing Temerin to reduce our maintenance costs. And and I appreciate he says, yeah, but Red Hat wants, if you need to build with your JDK, users can certainly configure a JDK to build with that JDK in their jobs. But we want the agent running with the Tamarin JDK. I got an alternative proposal is they commit to help us maintaining for <laughs> at least three years. If they cannot, then no. No, yeah, but uh, I, I... I have to share an insider piece of knowledge here. Adam Kaplan was the representative from Red Hat to the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Red Hat unfortunately exited the Continuous Delivery Foundation, so asking for three years of commitment is probably pointless. <laughs> That's why I went uh, only on the nightmare to manage. Right. So, okay, I agree. Is everyone okay for me uh, commenting... Uh, what Mark said, we discuss it uh, during the platform SIG. Uh, we do not uh, agree on adding a new GDK distribution. So if they want that contribution to be uh, approved and merge, uh, we keep the adding UB9 image, but they need to use the same pattern as the other images. Right. Yeah. Is Fine there any me. objection? No. Okay, no. I'm, taking, I'm taking the action. Thank you. Um, we'll talk maybe about that later on um, in the meeting, but I gave today a talk at the Adoption Summit regarding our journey with Tamarin. And when I see all the journey um, it took to arrive where we are now, 
I don't want us to make any exception. <laughs> you know, we simplify so many things. We streamline the process. It's so good now that there's no way we'll break this thing and add something that doesn't belong to uh, the way we are processing things. So yeah, please, right. uh, let's keep Temerary. Well, and, and okay, in past times when I was less experienced and less pained by maintenance, maintenance burden, uh, I would have just allowed it. But that was three years ago before we've gone through the experience of unifying and centralizing and simplifying so that we can maintain them reliably. So, and I think the, the security team will give us backing for that as well in terms of unification, right? They, they certainly don't want to add any more unique things than we absolutely have to. You're right. And they're even not happy when we're adding a platform. So let's even not talk about another JDK. <laughs> right. Exactly. Thank you, Paul. Um, now, the Spring project made an end of, life, uh, end of life announcement. So we have to move to Spring Security 6.x. Mark, um, do you have any insight about that? How are things going these days? Yeah. Okay. So. So we're at an important date. August 31 was end of life for Spring Security 5. So we are past end of life for Spring Security 5 and Spring Framework 5. Um, so we're still shipping Spring Security 5 in the LTS versions and we'll continue shipping that until the end of October. But Jenkins Weekly 2.475 includes Spring Security 6 and Jakarta EE9 and all of the things that came from that. And boy, there's a part of me that's intensely bitter about the organization that chose to assert their ownership of Java X as a trademark, but we've done it. And it's in weekly. We did, we've now done our second weekly release that includes Jetty 12 and EE9 and Thus far, we've had very few bug reports. We had one about a uh, that was related to needing an additional compatibility method. It's implemented in 4.76. Uh, that one fixed two or three plugins, all of them relatively low volume plugins. Those plugins have now been proposed for addition to the Jenkins plugin bill of materials so that we will detect problems in the future even faster. And, and it's, it's looking quite good. So weekly is there. We will choose the next LTS baseline next Wednesday, the 18th. And so, so 18 September, we choose the new LTS baseline. I would expect it will be either 2.476 or 2.477. And we're watching very, very carefully monitoring GitHub issues, monitoring Jenkins Jira, looking for any problem related to this transition. And thus far, it's been delightfully quiet. Now, there's still a lot of work that will have to be done on Upgrade Guide. Kevin Martins will be involved in that. There's a lot of work in terms of documentation. We'll probably do a blog post. We've got plenty of things to say because there are some complications hiding in this thing. We had one, for example, where the LDAP plugin, because it bundles pieces of Spring Security right inside the plugin, must be upgraded lockstep. And we had a question on the Jenkins forum that said, how do I do a lockstep plugin upgrade in the, with my Red Hat distribution? And the answer is, it's kind of painful. And you have to stop the service, manually download that plugin upgrade, put it into place, then perform the, the DNF or the apt or the zipper upgrade and then it starts and uses your the newly installed plugin so this is this is a bigger challenge if you're using the ldap plugin or one of the cast plugin is the other one that has that same class of problem okay so i guess we should write something and a pinned article in community jenkins io also a blog post uh to let people know what's going on yes and, and, and go ahead go ahead sorry no, 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 no. Ahead, you, you're right that there are multiple communication channels that we need to use for this. Community is a very good one. Uh, we've seen this kind of transition with tables to divs. We've seen this kind of transition with prototype JS. 
and we should model our communication after those experiences, what we learn from them. Yeah. Um, I have a stupid question. Um, as lots of our plugins are using Dependabot and so on, so we'll have an automatic PR regarding a new version of the bomb. Um, will that automatic PR break everything for lots of plugins or will we, will this be harmless? Good, good question. Okay. So plugin bill of materials right now, because it supports a wide range of Jenkins versions must still allow Java 11 and older Jenkins versions. So plugin bill of materials, no, it won't break people by getting new upgrades. However, the day will come and the day hasn't been chosen yet, but the day will come when the plugin parent palm will be upgraded to require Jenkins 2.474, what is it, 4, well, let's say Jenkins 2.475 or newer. And at, by when that happens, that will require Java 17. It will require Jakarta EE9. It will require you that you use Spring Security 6 or that you're using the compatibility layer. And, and so, yes, that day will come, but that's somewhat it's related to this, but not. this is not dependent on that change for plugins. So did that answer your question, Bruno? Yeah, totally, Mark. Thanks a lot. Uh, the announcement should be done around Halloween because it's spooky. <laughs> but, uh... and, and, and perfect, because the release date will be the 30th of October. Perfect, so, then. <laughs> so the day, before, the day before All Hallows' Eve, the day before the Eve of All Saints' Day, we will have a new release. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Uh -huh. And sorry, it's for you once again, the Java 21 support, the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. I think the other day you told us that it was not finalized yet and that and you had... So yeah, go ahead. It is certainly still not finalized, but there is, there is ongoing work on it. I'll probably return to it over the course of the next few weeks to do some further additions to it based on what we've learned. We will implement October 30th, the Jenkins LTS will require Java 17. Jenkins Weekly already requires Java 17. You already cannot run Jenkins with Java 11. So Jenkins Weekly with Java 11. Okay. So October 30th, Jenkins LTS will require Java 17. And, and it's a nice thing because Eclipse JGit releases tomorrow a new version of JGit that requires Java 17. And we're seeing this pattern more and more with other projects that about this time that they were expecting Java 11 to be end of life, they're switching over and say, fine, we're going to Java 17, even if Java has ex Java projects have generally extended their support of Java 11 beyond the original target. I see. Thank you for the explanation more. Now, I don't know if anything new happened uh, regarding the, the bug in Ubuntu 2404 that you experienced, Mark, on the, um, what is it, the adoption donated machine ARM64. Yeah, so this one was, I guess, one to ask Damien. I'm not aware of any further progress on it other than that it's actively discussed that if you attempt to use curl with certain very, very popular websites on an Ubuntu 2404 on ARM 64, 64. Yep. you will hit a problem. So, yep. so it's your choices right now are wait for the fix, downgrade to Ubuntu 2022, or somehow do some replacement workaround thing. In this case, my workaround right now is use wget instead of curl. It's a strange, exotic workaround, but okay, whatever. <laughs> Uh, in our case, we have seen the problem happen on with wget. It just happened. Uh... Oh less often uh, so i don't think it's curl specifically but the way curl interacts with one of the system libraries either uh, one loading certificates and the problem happened all the time during the uh, the open uh, during the tls uh, uh, connection establishing but at tcp level http connection is not established yet when the problem happened uh, i haven't 
checked in details, uh, but uh, I know we have pers uh, someone commented in the Jenkins Infra issue asking us to comment on Launchpad to push Ubuntu uh, to do something about this. Okay, great. But uh, Damien, most of our machines are Ubuntu 2204. So you yes. all so have to... some 2404 in the Infra? Uh, so, no, we stopped the campaign. Uh, in okay. any case, it's not top priority. There is no emergency to switch to 2004 because 22 uh, LTS are supported for five years. So we still have yeah. at least three years in front of us before starting to worry. Uh, however, we had a contributor that changed one of our images, the image used for packaging Jenkins, Docker packaging, the name is. Um, that image has been switched from 22 to 2404 because some libraries embedded in Ubuntu Noble were required for the packaging test harness of Jenkins. So there was a real reason to upgrade in that specific case. That's how we discovered the issue. Got it. That, that specific you. case is running on AMD64, at least for now, right, Damien? Absolutely. It's because uh, we wanted to build all of our images on both formats so we can switch when we want, for, but this one does not have any need of running on ARM64. So we disabled ARM64 in order to have the build pass it. Okay, thanks. Um, last subject I had, but I think Damien, you have another one afterwards. So as I told you earlier, uh, the Jump Summit was happening today. It was an online-only uh, conference, and I gave a talk there. I was the first of the day, uh, by the way, and it has been recorded, so it should be available in the following weeks, hopefully. I hope I didn't say too many stupid things, but I told our story with um, Tamarin uh, when we switched from OpenJDK to Tamarin, then we switched from using uh, Tamarin Docker images to uh, Tamarin binaries, and then we used update CLI in order to keep everything up to date. And then we used uh, Tamarin's API in the end, instead of writing our own magic bash script that would look what's happening in the GitHub releases for the Tamarin organization. And in the end, I even told about your work, Damien, regarding the new source in update CLI if you want to deal with Tamarin releases. Thanks to Tamarin for uh, giving us this opportunity to tell about our story of Jenkins and Tamarin. Damien, you had another subject or I may have misunderstood. Yes, uh, so that's one you already mentioned uh, regarding the Docker agent image, but also the Docker controller image. We have seen um, API rate limit from the Tamarin download websites. Of course, that's oh. a public website and it's a common good. So always the same issue as Docker Hub, Artifactory, and even now Update Center. Um, we have applied with success a fix on Docker SSH agent. Uh, and if we want to apply this on Docker agent, we need to work on reviewing and eventually merging, if it's acceptable, the pull request by Hervé uh, that try to transplant the work did on the SSH agent process on the agent. Why this request? Because that request embeds some scripts that are centralized. As soon as we merged it, we will have a new update CLI that will get the latest version of the download script for Tamarin that embed my fix. The fix is an easy one. It's the flag, uh, it's a retry flag on curl. Really efficient. Oh. And it's a, and of course it has exponential back off because most of the time we don't want to break the marine uh, system by immediately running again the same command. So we have an exponential back off not to break the servers. Um, the Docker controller also had the issue last week and we hit during the controller image release the problem. And for this one, uh, we need to work. So anyone interested on applying an update CLI uh, can transplant the one from SSH agent to Docker. That will help. Uh, and the proof will be once merged, it will update the script. Uh, finally, the Jenkins Infra is thinking, uh, but we don't have an, any, an easy, obvious solution. We could cache the Timurin downloads because they should change once every three months. 
We already have the artifact caching proxy system, which is an Nginx proxy we use in front of Maven. So we don't have to download all dependencies from Artifactory all the time. Maybe in the case of CI Jenkins IU at least, but eventually everywhere, we could benefit from caching the Temurin. The problem here is that how do we make it reproducible for contributors? Because in that case, it's a curl to an HTTP. So maybe we can do some awful and weird tricks uh, about, hey, overriding the DNS so that any downloads are sent to ACP, which connect to the real-life Temurin if needed. That's what we do with Maven, but in the case of Maven, it's explicit, not here. I'm not sure about an easy solution. For now, the retriker looks a good fix. Then we'll see if we have more issue or if Temurin complains or if they have problem worth asking them. But right now, our download rate looks good. Okay, is it done. clear? Do you need yes, it you is. more details? And they didn't shout at me at me earlier mm -hmm. today, so I think they didn't see what we were doing to their website, or they don't care. <laughs> or they haven't checked the public IP that are hammering their downloads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you so much, Tamarine. We'll put you down. Uh, <laughs> that's a toxic relationship. Okay, thanks a lot, Damien. Anything else, folks, you would like to address? Okay, I take that for a no. Thanks a lot for your time. Um, the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. Um, we should see each other two weeks from now. Yeah, okay, because next week I will be in Vienna to the Open Source Summit, but it's a week after that we'll see. Um, we'll see to us together, whatever. So anyhow, have a wonderful rest of your day and see you soon. Bye-bye.